Let's talk about the power of vegetables and how they can influence our memory. As always, I'm Sean Hashmi. Thanks so much for checking us out. Don't forget to like, subscribe us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. That's how we're able to continue our mission of providing education to everyone out there that's based on evidence. All right, so today, let's look at what's going on over here. So what we find is that food, especially our green leafy vegetables, has such a strong impact on things like memory. And this is a fascinating study it came out a few years back. And what they were looking was, was to find out what is it specifically about green leafy vegetables that makes them so powerful. And so they studied things like vitamin K, phylloquinone, lutein, beta carotene, nitrate, folate, camphorol, alpha tocopherol, and all of these fancy names are all part of what makes vegetables so powerful. But remember, you can't just supplement them. There's something about when you eat whole foods that all of this amazing stuff is in just the right amounts that does so much benefit for us. So this specific content was looking at what happens to memory. All right, so what did they do here? It was a prospective study, which meant they looked forward in time. Remember, that makes the study more powerful than if they started and looked backwards in time. They had about a thousand people in there and they wanted to make sure those guys did not have dementia already. So they were trying to make sure these were people without any memory problems. They had them create a food frequency questionnaire. And remember, those always have issues. But unfortunately, we don't have a better way of trying to find out what people are eating and they had more than two assessments to look at what's going on with their memory. So they followed them over an average of about four and a half years. And then they looked at all sorts of different ways to find out how is their memory every time they followed them. So was it through tests involving episodic, working, semantic, visual, spatial, and perceptual? So all of these ways to give an accurate idea of how their memory was changing over time. Okay, for diet, what they were doing was, of course, using this food frequency questionnaire at each evaluation, but one of the weaknesses of the study was they only used the first food frequency questionnaire. Now, in their defense, that first food frequency questionnaire was similar to all the rest of them. And the three green leafy vegetables that they really focused on was spinach, kale, collards and greens, and lettuce. All right, other things that were important. Well, some of the weaknesses that I thought was, as always in most studies, things like alcohol, exercise, and smoking, people self-reported. So if you're somebody and a study researcher asks you, do you smoke? You may want to just say, well, no, not really. I only smoke a cigarette a day, even though you might smoke like a pack because you're trying to have a bias to see that you're well-liked by the researcher. Same thing with high blood pressure, though we did look at medications to see what they were on. Along with diabetes, they also looked at medications. Heart attack was the same thing. They were either self-reported or looking at were you on things like aspirin or beta blockers, etc., to give us an idea if you might have had a heart attack in the past. Now, one of the most important things to look at a study is always this table, which gives you an idea of who are these people and how do the different groups differ. So for example, here, the average age was 81. So it's significantly higher. So this study may not apply to young people. They were mostly males. So the question is, is how does it really apply to women? And then they were well educated. So these guys were already starting at a much higher level of memory. And interestingly enough, they also tended to have a lot more high blood pressure already present. Remember, high blood pressure is linked to memory decline. Now, if you compare the ones who ate the highest amount of vegetables to the ones who ate the lowest amount of vegetables, what you found was that the highest intake or highest guys who were taking in the most amount of vegetables also were very well educated. So is it because they're already educated that they already had a propensity to have less memory loss? Yet, they also participated in more physical activities. And we know that exercise is linked to better memory. So if that's the case, was it because of that? And then, of course, they had less history of heart attacks. Of course, exercise will do that. 
and they had less history of depressive symptoms. So they were already starting in a better place. So it's the chicken or the egg. What came first? Was it all of these things or was it the fact that they were prone to have better memory and all of these other parts that also made it easier for them to exercise more, to may have less depressive symptoms? So keep that in mind as we're looking at the results. But the results are fascinating. When they followed these people over time, what they found was that the highest vegetable intake group had basically a difference in their memory capacity up to about an 11-year difference. That's fascinating. So your brain was of somebody who was essentially 11 years younger because you were consuming, and it wasn't that much. They were consuming only about a serving and a half per day. So imagine how powerful that is, is that when you're eating to make sure you have your green leafy vegetables on your plate, at least for one of your meals, preferably for all your meals, and what a dramatic impact it can make on your health. So after adjusting for all sorts of stuff, what they found was that there were three nutrients that were basically accounting for all of this dramatic effect on memory. What were they? Philoquinone, lutein, and folate. Now, before you think, oh my God, I can just go out and supplement with that, remember, when we look at supplementation, we never get the same results because when you get it through food, you get it in just the right amounts, and that makes a huge impact. This is why a whole foods, plant-based diet gives you all of these things in a lot of abundance. Okay. They adjusted for all sorts of things, but when they adjusted it, what they found was despite adjusting, green leafy vegetables had a huge impact. So if you're wondering, philoquinone, which is our vitamin K1, where are you going to get the vitamin K1? From a supplement? No, it just takes some greens, right? Greens, just half a cup, has a really nice amount. Kale has lots of vitamin K or philoquinone. Even the frozen version, so it doesn't matter. Spinach is awesome, right? So when Popeye used to eat his spinach, there's actually some truth to that because it not only makes you stronger, it's also got awesome ability to help you over years in terms of memory. How about lutein? Well, what's great for lutein? Check this out. So lutein is your antioxidant and is found in all of those beautiful colors, right? The, the yellow, the red, the orange colors in fruits and vegetables, right? But once again, kale is also a wonderful source of lutein. Spinach is awesome, right? And then folate, vitamin B9, right? Read it for all sorts of things. Red cell, white cell blood pr protection. Converts sugars, right? So you eat your carbohydrates. It gets energy out of those carbohydrates. It repairs your cells, repairs the DNA and RNA. And what are good source? My favorite, edamames, spinach right? Asparagus, all of these wonderful things that you have options on. Now, we talked about some of the limitations in the study. It's a, f a food frequency questionnaire. Remember, there's some recall bias. The population sample was mostly white, so it may not apply to other ethnic groups. A lot of self-reported stuff, such as smoking, exercising, heart attacks, diabetes, stroke, etc. Now, also, they were older, right? So it may not apply to younger folks. But what is the bottom line here? Number one, eating green leafy vegetables is really, really good for you in all sorts of ways. And now we have more data to say it's really good for memory decline. And one to two servings per day, just one to two servings was equivalent to being 11 years younger in these people that were fallen. Remember, they were in their 80s, so they had been doing this for a long time. But the bottom line that you want to take home is, is eat green leafy vegetables. They are wonderful. You. I want to thank everybody for sticking with us, for checking us out. Please don't forget to like us. Please don't forget to subscribe. We really appreciate your support. And if there's any topics you're interested in, just let us know and we will make sure we cover them next time. Thanks again and please take care of yourself. Bye-bye.